What's up everybody, Kendetic here, welcome back to Tai Chi Panda 3. This will be the third video in my series that explores what the game is about, what uh, what kind of gameplay features you can expect from this free-to-play mobile MMORPG. And uh, yeah, today I'm actually going to be playing a, a different class than my usual Ice Mage. So we're going to see some different gameplay. I'm also going to kind of steer this into a beginner's guide because in the previous videos it was all about like high-end gameplay right like the the high-end uh dungeons and you know pvp and you know just help people get one foot in front of the other before they start sprinting right uh before we get started with all of that though i want to thank snail games for sponsoring the video and for the viewers if you guys would like more information beyond what you'll see here in this video then be sure to check the links down in the description of the video for more information and for a quick link to sign up to the game it's free to play you got nothing to lose so let's get started in the the last videos like I said I was using my ice mage and that was part of the the lion empire we have the lion empire and the the panda alliance which are the two factions that fight against each other if you see each other in in open world it's on <laughs> right now they ha each have five different classes that you can choose from and as you'll see as we go from one uh, to the other they are very similar. You have, for example, here up at the top, you have the, the tanky class, the melee fighter, wheel sword, and shield. Now, on the the panda side, they got basically the same thing, just with a slightly different flavor. It's called a swordsman, and it's a panda, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it, it, there's not much of a difference, but there is kind of like an aesthetic difference, I suppose, between the two. If you don't really feel like playing a panda, and you, you like the, the kind of more lionish look to your uh, your sword and board hero, then maybe this is what you would choose, right? Uh, down from that, we have the Ice Mage. This is what I played. Looking a bit different from mine. Mine had uh, a different hairstyle and... and uh, blonde color and we'll get into character customization here pretty soon. So Ice Mage obviously range fighter, DPS, damage dealer. Then we have the Priest which is a combination of healing and fighter. And down from that we have the Scout. Now what's funny is the Scout is the same name and the same character on both alliances. It's, it's the only one that doesn't change for some reason uh, but it is a, a ranged archer. And then we have the assassin over here, ranged, excels uh, at runes, but uh, isn't just ranged, it's interesting that it says ranged, it's a lot of uh, melee hits as well. But anyway, so there you go, that's the, the Lion Empire, and then on the, the Panda Alliance, we have the Swordsman, right? Sword and board melee fighter. Down from there, we have the Rune Mage, which is kind of the, more or less the same as the Ice Mage, just a slightly different flavor, right? Like I said. Down from that, healer, looks a lot like the Ice Mage, just now with uh, healing powers. And then we have the Scout, like I said, exactly the same. Same name, same, uh, you know, everything. And then down from there, instead of the Assassin, it's the Killer. And it turns female, which is quite nice. So there we go, there's the, the differences between the two. If we go to next, now we can see what kind of customization options that we have for this particular uh, character. So we've got a, a couple of different hairstyles. We, we just uh, tap and, and drag or click and, and twist like this. We get a, a, a nice 3D view of the character. Clicking on the hair zooms in a bit, shows us a different style. And there we go. There's our third option. These down here really make a, a, a bigger difference in kind of customizing your character. So here we will get the uh, the color selection and then here this would be the the brightness settings how much brightness do you want in the uh in the hair color you can go for like super omega ultra pink and then we've got a, a saturation here so if you drag it here to the left super like gumball pink there or if you if you want more like i don't know like a more angelic pink or something like that or like a sakura cherry blossom kind of uh, pinky you get something like that right I think you get the idea uh, down from there on the left side now we've got uh, some more customization options we've got face paints and tattoos depending on uh, on the character again that you're customizing I believe for the pandas what it does is it changes like the the white to black kind of outlines that that they have on their face because normally pandas just have like the you know like the, the circles in their face they get all kinds of like wicked uh, options for I think their, uh, their their black portions of their face <clears throat> and then we've got uh, skin tone right 
And then here we have an armor selection. Sadly for the the killer, they don't they don't have any. They've only got one choice compared to the the other classes. For example, swordsmen. If you go to their uh, their armor, look, they've got three different uh, beginner armor selections here. Actually, I like that one. That one looks cool. Even the um, uh, I, I think the healer and ice mage also have some uh, some extra customization options. So. Uh, yeah, Snail Games, you should you should probably do something about that. I think. <laughs> yeah, give us uh, give us some more starting ar armor options for uh, for our assassins and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, speaking of killers and assassins, I've already got a uh, a new killer that I made somewhat recently. I'm not going to start at the very very beginning because it's really basic stuff. Uh, when you're just getting into the game, all you do is you talk to the chief. You run a couple of basic quests of, you know, go kill this, go fetch that or whatever. And it's not that it changes that much because <laughs> it's still a lot of kill quests in this game. Uh, but then you get your first mount and then here you are at this point. So I think we're sort of beyond the the, the, the very, very beginnings of the tutorial phase. And, uh, and we might actually see some action. Um, certainly there's more stuff here on the screen to look at. And that's kind of what I want to, to start off with. There's a lot of stuff going on here on screen. So I just want to quickly kind of go over it to, uh, to point out some of the more important features. Obviously we have our character up here in the, uh, the top left with the health and magic. If you click on the character, then it will actually take you to, I guess this is more or less the main menu that will take you to more sub menus from here for example, your character and your character's inventory, right? And then you've got even more sub menus of your attributes and your skills to to customize your uh, your battle style and and stuff like that, right? So, for example, here I think I talked about this in the previous videos how you've got the the different skills that you unlock over time and then once you have the money then you can level these up right so for example i don't have enough right now but if i did i would select this this gives me the explanation if i've got the gold then i can go ahead and level it up but this is something that i didn't actually realize until much later you can actually customize the the slots that these skills are assigned in so look at that. You just click and drag to change the the, the slot uh, placement of your skills on the basically the action bar, right? Which is uh, is pretty neat. And then we've got the uh, the equipment section. This is where you do all of your equipment customizing. For example, your um, your fortifications that increases the the power of your items. Which I don't write. This is important. I do not recommend fortifying anything until you're probably at least level 40. It's just not important. Uh, don't waste your mats. Don't waste your money. Just wait until things actually start to get a bit more challenging. Like when maybe you're starting to get into um, like the second or third dungeon or something like that in the game. Like, yeah, it's it's not worth it. Same thing with gems. I mean, if you're the min max type, sure, go for it. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying don't do it. <laughs> don't do it too early anyway. Um, and then you've got insert. We don't actually have this until uh, later, but you can place gems into your armor. And that is also a way to uh, to customize your stats and stuff like that. This also gives you um, your your access to your mount menus and your pets, hunting instance for dungeons and stuff like that, right? And then all kinds of stuff there in the middle. But back here to the UI. So we've got that. But this is really important. I don't know if I actually pointed this out uh, specifically in the previous videos. This right here is a great way to help you understand how to get your character uh, powered up or to progress in some way that you're looking forward to. So it, for example, if you need more levels before you get access to the next dungeon that you're really looking forward to or something like that, you come here to this menu and on the getting XP section, it can give you this option, kill high XP monsters. And then you click this and it will give the option to teleport to that location where you can therefore go ahead and grind on monsters or whatever, uh, fight monsters in the enemy factions areas, and then we've also got options for how to get armor, where to get mounts, pets, and stuff like that. So this is really such a great tool. And I wish more MMOs, not even just MMOs on mobile, but all MMOs would have more helpful uh, tips and, you know, kind of guides like this. So we've got all that. We've got all these other shortcuts here that will help you to, you know, get to places faster through the menu. But 
It's a bit much, isn't it? And sometimes you just want a cleaner looking UI. We've got a couple of buttons for that. Boom, click that right there. There's a nice big chunk of screen real estate back for you. Also over here, this, this menu button, boom. That little arrow will collapse the, uh, the quests in over there and look at that. Much better looking, I think, in, uh, in my opinion. Oh yeah, so now that we're actually about to get into combat, you'll notice now my target is up here in the uh, in the top. And if you want to deselect that target, you can just double tap or double click on uh, on some other section of the uh, the screen, and then click on something different if you have uh, another target in mind. So yeah, let's go ahead and do this. I'll, I'll remain mounted while I'm at it. I really like the assassin slash uh, killer's playstyle. They have some uh, some really cool moves. Very assassin-y type. <laughs> okay, that that's yeah, that's that. I'm not sure what the crystal prisms were were doing. Maybe they were bringing down its power or or something like that. But we'll go ahead and talk with uh, Theo, Theo Bald. And to complete our quest. By the way, uh, you may have seen this before, uh, or maybe you're just seeing it for the first time here in this video. But yeah, clicking on the quest will auto path you to the the location of where you need to go, and it will also automatically engage you in battle uh, as well. It seems we're taming. Oh boy, here we go. We're gonna tame a griffin and make it our pet, I guess. This is a little mini game where you have to click on the the different whips on the left or the right to try and keep that marker as close to the middle as possible. The more you keep this in the middle and every every time you click, it gives you a heart that helps you more quickly befriend. Wow. Help you uh, more quickly befriend the, uh, the animal to make it your mount. I got an S rating on that, not bad. 17 seconds. Can you guys beat that? I bet you can't. <laughs> All right, so then we get the, the mount personality, the HP. Mounts are pretty deep here in this game. They really are. They come with their own skills, and you use them not just for travel, but also for combat uh, from, uh, from the ground, from the air. That's one of my favorite things, actually, about this game. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and close this out. Thank you very much. And now... Since we're flying, we have some different controls. We can go up and we can go down. Uh, you can press these buttons here as well to ascend or descend. And since we're on a mount now, we also have uh, new uh, options on our hotbar for attacks that our mounts may uh, provide as well in battle. Attacks, sometimes buffs, it might be like a, a shield or something like that. And, uh, and understanding e what each of the different mounts does is really going to make a big difference particularly i think in pvp battles uh, i i realized i had to learn quickly what my different mounts could do what other enemies mounts could do uh, so that way i could counter or you know at least anticipate what they might do next in the fight so yeah we're just going through the uh, the main plot here and what was that i got something new didn't i let's take a look at the the inventory oh wow i've actually got a uh, a new blade that's uh, that's waiting for me. That's cool. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? Got some other things like agility boots. This is the same that I'm, I'm already already using. And for these pieces that you don't need, particularly like these uh, low grade greens or blues, you're better off just going ahead and selling them just to get them out of your inventory. There's a lot of gear in this game, and your inventory is going to get flooded pretty quickly. There is an auction house system, but I have the feeling that for the most part, nobody's interested in buying low level gear or anything like that. So the auto pathing, which is not what I'm using currently, but can if I want to by clicking on the, the plot or whatever quest, is, is there for your convenience. You don't necessarily have to use it. Same thing with the auto combat. In fact, I definitely recommend not using auto combat if you are uh, if, if you are in PvP combat, but it's there for your convenience, and I think it makes sense. There's also some other systems here, actually many systems, probably, that are there for your convenience. Just, just kind of speed things up. Let's take a look at this, actually. Equip. So, when you're replacing a, a piece of gear, 
with a new one from an older one, you get this option. Remove all gems, switch the fortify and forge level of the two equipment. Say yes. What this does is it takes the, the levels that you've invested in your old gear and that applies it to your new gear which is really nice it will do the same thing for your gems as well so this is the old piece of gear that i just replaced and my new one is already equipped and you can see the plus one represents that it has the fortification levels so that's great i really like that it takes instead of losing all that progress all the gold and you know, whatever that you invested to upgrade your gear isn't lost. It gets transferred to your next piece of gear. Same thing with your gems. If you got them uh, in, inserted into uh, your weapon or your, your body armor or something like that, it also takes that as well with just one click. Really, really nice. And I think, yes, I've got some gold now I can use to go ahead and level up my skill. I will do that while we're here. And yeah. Got some other players running around doing quests. All right, let's talk to the prospective hunter. Please. To celebrate our victory, I have decided to give you a Rhinosaur King horn. Just a horn? I was the one who took it out. But I set the traps. Anyway, the horn is actually the most valuable part. Oh, thanks then. So, got uh, a bunch of XP, we're now level 22, and we've got a new dagger. Would you like to, <laughs> once again, would you like to uh, remove all gems and switch to fortify levels, etc.? Yes, I would. And up goes my might. Very, very cool. So I just replaced my two old daggers with two new daggers and one quest. Pretty epic. Um, that's how this game is going to be, probably for a good... 40 levels <laughs> or so uh, remember i'm like pushing level 80 or whatever on on my other character but yeah but until i would say about level 40 or something like that the game is just throwing gear at you and you really don't have to worry too much about uh farming or grinding for new gear until you start to get access to the dungeons like the second third dungeon that's when you start seeing some really nice gear coming up and uh, and worth repeating dungeons for that's what I like to do anyway. So, I got agility earrings from that. Where did he come from? He bon said voyage, he's an invigilator? There's also an organization? Okay, cool. So that was a, a nice improvement to my might. And we can defeat some phantom skulls nearby while we're here. I really like the combat while you're mounted. But at any time, if you don't want to be mounted, uh, then you can just... Click your, your mount button, and there you go. Dismount, and you're still in combat. I kind of like the the mounted combat, but also like the uh, the on-foot, boots-on-the-ground combat as well. Plus, you get a chance to check out your, your chick or your dude flailing about doing quests. It's pretty fun. Some more earrings. Is that a drop? Or was that a reward for completing the quest? pretty good. Why don't you give it a shot? Oh, I get a pretty sweet ride on my way to uh, put my next quest. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Again, I just kind of wanted to, to go back to the basics, right, and help uh, walk through uh, anybody that's interested in playing this game and giving you a taste of what it's like at the early levels, right, and explaining the different options, not all of them, but some of the, the early important options, right, for understanding uh, what's going on here and the game. And uh, yeah, if you would like to see more high level gameplay, uh, some dungeons, some PVP action and stuff like that, you should check out the, the previous videos that I did. I'll have a link to my playlist that features Tai Chi Panda videos uh, also down there in the description. Don't forget to check out the official link to more information about Tai Chi Panda 3 and also a quick link access to downloading this game and trying it out yourself for free. Uh, it's one of the better Wow, this town is cool. It's definitely one of the, the better MMO RPGs on the mobile market. I do recommend it. It's it's quite fun. And there's a lot of little things from the mounts to the pets and how fun the, the dungeons are and the PvP can get pretty wild as well as seen in previous videos. But yeah, that's going to do it for now. Until 
next time, guys. I want to know what you think down in the comment section below. Click the like button to support more gameplay videos here on the channel from various games, from MMOs, PC, uh, console games. I'm doing all kinds of stuff here lately. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to your comments and seeing you in the next video. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks again for watching. This is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time.